So we're going to look at number theory and in particular the quadratic residues. Now the question, what we're asking is, does x squared congruent to a modulus k have any solutions? Now if a, this integer here, is a quadratic residue of k, then it will have a solution. If a is what's called a non-quadratic residue, then it will not have a solution modulus k. So first of all, x, a and k are all integers dealing with uh, modulus of arithmetic here. And we're going to ask these three questions. x squared congruent with 3 mod 6, x squared congruent with 5 mod 14, and x squared congruent with 8 mod 17. So for mod 6, k equals 6. Let's find the quadratic residues and the quadratic non-residues of 6. So what we do is just list them all up in a table. This is one method we can use. And then just work out the solution to all of these modulus 6 and see what set we, we can produce. So 1 leads to 1, 2 squared leads to 4. So now working in modulus 6, 3 squared produces 3, 4 squared which is 16 which will produce 4 and then 5 squared modulus 6 will produce 1. So quadratic residues, let's write them up here, the quadratic residues of 6 are 1, 3 and 4. So that's our quadratic residues. So our quadratic non-residues of 6, they are 2, 5, 2 and 5. Okay, so let's see what we can get here. x squared is congruent with 3 mod 6. From this, we are saying that this is a, this one has a solution. So x squared is congruent with 3 modulus 6. So let's just see if that works. So x squared is congruent with 3 mod 6. Now what we're saying modulus 6, we can increase this by 6 each time until we get a square number. Or we can see straight away x squared is congruent with 9 mod 6. So x equals plus or minus 3 mod 6. So therefore x equals 3. So that's our solution there. Let's see what would happen if we put in, for example, 4. x squared is congruent with 4 mod 6. Well, for this, we can just square this off straight away. So x equals plus or minus 2 mod 6. So therefore, x equals 2 or 4. So we can see straight away there, we've got solutions. OK. Let's have a look at the next one, modulus 14. So in this one, k equals 14. And I'm going to show you something here with a shortcut so we don't have to square all the numbers. So if we just go to halfway, so I'll go to 7 squared, and we'll square all these all up. Again, modulus 14 this time. So we get 1, 4 and 9 straight away. 4 squared is 16. Modulus 14 yields a 2. 5 squared is 25. 25 yields an 11. 6 squared is 36. That will yield an 8. And 7 squared is 49. That will yield a 7. So now I'm going to write these in here now. 
and I'm going to just write them down without even calculating and I'm going to leave it to you to check them. Okay, so 8 squared I'm going to say is 8, 11, 2, 9, 4, 1. So you can see what I did there. We take this 7 as the middle point and then they are reflected along these parameters here. Okay, so that's how we can take a shortcut. So now we can say, I'm just going to write QR now for R of 14. That will give us 1, 2, Four, seven, eight, nine, eleven. Okay, and the non-quadratic residues. So I'm going to call these uh, quadratic non-residues of fourteen. They will give us three, five, six, ten, twelve, and thirteen. Okay, so that's our non-quadratic residues. So the question was, x squared grew up with 5 mod 14. So let's put that up here. x squared is congruent with 5 mod 14. Now does this have a quadratic residue? It appears it's in the non-quadratic residues. So I'd say that this one doesn't have a solution. Now, if we keep adding multiples of 14 and adding that to 5 to see if we come across a square number. So we go 14, 28, 42, 56, 70. Keep adding 5 onto the number I multiply by 14. So that's 84, which is 89, 98, 112, 126, 140, 154, 168. 182. None of those is going to yield a perfect square when we add 5. So we've shown there x squared is congruent with 5 mod 14. Now as we did the last time, let's see what happens when we do x squared is congruent with 7. Now notice 7 is the middle of these quadratic residues. That's the centre one. So what number can we multiply 14 by to give us a perfect square when adding 7? Well, 3 14s are 42. Add 7 gives us 49. So x squared is congruent with 49 mod 14. So x equals plus or minus 7 mod 14. So x equals 7. So that gives us one solution. Now let's try, for example, the 8. So if our table of quadratic residues is correct, this should have a solution. So keep adding multiples of 14 to 8. So 14, 28, okay. So straight away, 2 14s are 28 plus 8 is 36. So x squared is congruent with 36 mod 14. That's the same congruence. So x equals plus or minus 6 mod 14. 14, so x equals 6 or 8. Okay, so these have got 2. So the middle one of this one and the middle one of 3, then 6 is 3, so this one and this one will give us one solution. The rest of them will give us two solutions. Okay, now let's try for the last one. x squared is congruent with 8 mod 17. So this time we're dealing with a prime and an odd number. So let's try that. So k equals 17. So same as before, I'm just going to go to halfway. So I'm going to try going to 9, just to cover that last one. So square these up, all modulus 17 this time. So, 1 squared, that's 1, 
4, 9 and 16. That's pretty straightforward. So now just a little bit of arithmetic now with modulus 17. So 25 gives us 8, 36 will give us 2, 49 will give us 15, 64 will give us 13, and 81 will also give us 13. Okay, so now I'm going to go take this line here, because somewhere between 8 and 9 will be the middle this time, and let's just see if we get them to match up in this way. So hopefully this will give us 15. So that's 100. And 517 is 85. So that does indeed give us 15. So 11, let's try that, it's 11 squared, 12 squared, 13 squared, 14 squared, 15 squared, 16 squared. So 11 squared is going to give us 2. 5 squared is the same as 12 squared, which would give us 8. 13 squared would be the same as 4, which would give us 16. So let's just try that one out. Let's try this 16. Let's see what happens. So 169 modulus 17 is in fact 153 plus 16. So that's correct. So this 14 squared will give us 9. 15 squared will give us 4. And the last one should always give us one. Okay, so our quadratic residues, let's just write them up here. So the quadratic residues of 17, that will give us one, two, no three, there's a four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's a nine. So the square numbers will always appear in the quadratic residues. No 10, 11, 12, 13, and 15. And finally 16. So that's our quadratic residues of 17. So just rubbing this line out here now so we can fit that in. Our quadratic non residues of 17, they will give us 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, and 14. So that's our quadratic non residues. Okay, now let's answer the question that was in the original start of the, start of the video x squared is congruent with 8 mod 17. We're saying that this has a solution. So let's put that up on here and let's see if we can work it out. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. x squared is congruent with 25 mod 17. And that's the same as being congruent to 8. So therefore x equals plus or minus 5 mod 17, so x equals 5 or 12. So we've got two solutions. Okay, let's have a look at 9. Let's see what happens with 9. x squared is congruent to 9 mod 17. So let's keep adding multiples of 17 with 9 and see what we can get to. So x squared, so 17, 34, 51, 68, 85, 102, 119, 136, 153, 170, 187. So 187 plus 9 is 196. So 196 we know is 14 squared. So therefore x equals plus or minus 14 mod 17. So x equals 14 and minus 14 mod 17 is also 3. So here for odd numbers we'll see that all 
of the solutions of the quadratic residues, the value A, will all have two solutions. So here there's no value here which will only have one solution. I'm going to let you try that out for yourselves. Okay.